Right, well the new cutter's here. It's in place, I've touched it off, I'm ready to go. Here's the old one, here's the Osborne one that I had. That I buggered up. Now, <clears throat> it went soft, I think I just, I, I mean I felt, I'm sure I was running it too fast, I've had plenty of advice on that. Um, and maybe a bit stupidly I tried to touch the edges up and sharpen it and I think I've completely ballsed it up. Taggart walked in the workshop, had a look at it and said, there's been a murder. Anyway, let's get on with what we've got to get on with. So I've set it to 150 revs as per your recommendation, Renegade, and I'll uh, give it a couple of goes and see how we go on with it. Hundred and fifty seems very slow. Well, that was definitely cutting, but uh, just whip it around the other side and give it a go. Right, I'm going to try up a millimetre down this side. That's only going to take a tiny bit off the corner, but the actual rev counter says this is going at 172. Can't really get it much slower than that, or it just stalls. Go a bit quicker than that. Oh, that's about four hundred. feeling this is coming out of the collet. Well, I can't get it any tighter in the collet so perhaps this... Well, I don't know. It was cutting fine at them speeds, but I think I might try and speed it out a little bit. I don't know why it was cutting the actual bottom surface of that. Shouldn't have been. I 
find out it's still cutting it when I come back down that side. running it at 550 at the moment it's um seems to be cutting it fine but i'm only going in half a millimeter at a time so it's a bit slow going see where i'll get to when i'm finished all right well that's about where i want to be the waste And the camera's going to pick that up. It's very um, iron filing like. Cutter seems to be all right though. And it seems to have left quite a good finish on the actual cut. So I'll get it out and clean it up. I've still got to make the jib for the other bit. So this is the tool holder. The dovetails are done. Cut a slot in it to take a 10 mil tool. Drilled and tapped it for these three retaining things. I buggered this up a bit. I've left this way too thin down here. I should have had this more in the middle. Not quite sure how I managed that, but um, I did. So I cut a little gib for here. And that will slide in. I'll just lock it off with that. Now I've put a couple of marks on. I just blued it and put some marks on where I think I'm going to have to engrave them for the witness marks on this one and just here on this one. This one was easier. I put this on my surface plate and just put a gauge across the top. So I'm pretty certain about that one. That's just got to push back into here. Put the nut on it. I mean, at the moment, I've got to use tools to loosen them off and tighten them up and that, but uh, I'll have to do something about that. I need to um, just square this off and put a couple of witness marks on there as well I can see that so I just need to get a motor sorted out for it get it set up on a board nearly ready to give it a go so this is the motor I'm thinking of using it for this is a 200 volt uh, 200 watt 100 volt DC motor came out of a wobble plate Problem is <coughs> to use it. I've got this gubs, the circuit tree that goes with it, and a little transformer, little uh, 230 volt. The output is nine and a half volts on that. <coughs> so I don't know where the 100 volts is coming from, somewhere else on here. But this 
is the uh, control unit that goes with it on a curly thing Let's plug it in and make sure it's still working well, I don't know whether that's going to pick that up it's got all straight lines on there at the moment Turning it on. Well, I'm holding on to the motor here, I ain't plugged the motor into the bowl. No. Alright, I've got the motor plugged into the bowl now, my saying might happen. Plug it in. I'm not sure what's gonna happen here. So I'll try to turn it. Oh, that's him, he's off. <laughs> Idea what the speeds are on that. Just give me a little four same and see if I can see what they're going at. Right, I've got a little bit of reflective tape stuck on there and one of these handheld rev counters. Let's see what we got. Down at 3,000 revs on that one. Right. <clears throat> this has also got different modes on it, this motor. Obviously, an up and down thing, this. Get it on program one again. <coughs> Try that again. So three thousand two hundred. Yeah, right up here is top speed. Four thousand two hundred, so I presume that goes up in hundreds. Right on two. It's about three thousand four hundred. So I just got to try and figure out what sort of size pulley I've got to make for it. I don't really know how fast I should run this. Maybe I should. Um, have a think about that one then I've got to figure out a way of mounting this somewhere <clears throat> and whether I can do without all this gubs I think that'd look quite good on there though wouldn't it so I've jumped forward a little bit this is where I'm currently at I made this aluminium plate just to fit onto the original casting here these holes was already tapped in the casting <coughs> excuse me so I um, I just lined them up to screw this on cut these bits out to fit over there now I did cut this hole in the um, 
plate so that the motor will slide in from this way but um, drilled and tapped these holes put some studs in them so the motor will slide in this way I wasn't sure whether I'd need any adjustment on that so but at the moment I've just got it bolted on with these studs from the back um, I made this little concentric belt tensioner this is just a little bit of steel with a bearing pressed into it the bearing is one of the old bearings off of my bandsaw when I changed the bearings on that <clears throat> no I mean it's just a second hand old bearing the reason I made this belt tensioner was because I ordered the belt too long and I made these pulleys out of steel to go on the motor in the shaft I've taken the old pulley off of here obviously maybe not I don't know anyway I took the old pulley off and I've made this little steel one now making these little pulleys I had a bit of a disaster but <clears throat> I'll go into that a bit later so this is it <clears throat> all ready to go so here's my super duper handheld controller uh, let's plug it in and fire him up. So it spins. I think most of the noise is coming from this old bearing I've got in here. It uh, was a bit worn out, that's why I changed it. But I might order another belt and make a tighter belt for this anyway. But that'll be for later. But it's spinning. So I've just got to reassemble it now. Alright, I'm ready to start doing something in anger now. Some of you may have noticed I've um, I cut this off ages ago. I've actually shortened the uh, length for the carriage. I've still got to bolt it down to something, but it's quite heavy. So, um, so I've got a little diamond wheel dresser in there. I'm going to give it a go. I put the Uber on. Right, so that's the wheel dressed. I've got some 10mm HSS blank. Bought these up of uh, Banggood. I bought three of them. I think they were about 13 and a half quid. They're 8 inches long and 10mm square. So I'm going to go and rough grind this a bit on my uh, offhand grinder. I'm going to try and do a 60 degree threading bit. So I'll go and get the majority of it off and then I'll come and put it in here and finish it off. Right, I'll give this a rough grind. Which, if the camera's going to pick that up, it is way off at the moment. So I'm going to stick it in the tool, set it up for the right angles and see how we get on. Right, I've got this in here. I think I've tightened everything up. <clears throat> I just really want to see how it gets on with these angles because I've only got rough witness marks on there 
Um, well, let's give it a go. I'm taking a bit too much off there. full speed We've certainly ground it. Struggled a bit though and I thought this motor would have been plenty for it but uh, it's only just about managing it. I'd tip it the other way, mightn't it?
Akhirnya ya, nah belum gede We've got quite a nice finish. Let's see how the angles are. Looks like it's a little tiny bit out. I don't know whether you're going to pick that up on the camera. Get it in the right place. It's not bad, but it's a tiny, less than a degree, I would say, out. <clears throat> but that's, um, I've got to sort that witness mark out. But, I mean, it's grounded perfect. I mean, I wouldn't need the diamond. I mean, that's, just, that's a lovely finish on that. Well, it certainly works, but I'm not sure the motor's going to be up to it. It seems like that 200 watt. Motor ain't really up to the job, so I might have to get a bigger motor on it. But it does look like it works. Once I get the witness mark sorted out and see if I can get that perfect, I'll say that. I mean, I'd be lucky to get it that close hand grinding it. Let me hold this up to the light so I can actually. I mean, there's a tiny, tiny bit out, but I can sort that out on the uh, witness mark. I don't know if you can see that, it's about that much wobble on it. Might be easier if I put it in the big one. You can probably see it better there. But, it looks like it's going to work. Now I do need to make some other attachments for it and try not to balls them up this time. Um, I want to make the motor reverse as well because I want to be coming. It doesn't really matter whether it's going up or down I suppose but. I mean it's, it, I can't really get, unless I'm altering this I can't get it close enough to. Get anything with that angle on here. bit of a bugger but it looks like it works now then going back to what I was saying earlier about the disaster I had when I was making these pulleys well I'll show you a little bit of film and then I'll show you what happened So, being an impatient knob and trying to take two deeper cuts on them little pulley wheels and I knew I was kicking the arse out of it. I mean, it's my own fault. It's entirely my own fault. What that resulted in was me burning out my VFD. hard to see on this little thing but you can see this component here completely burnt out I mean the motor was trying to do it the motor was powerful enough the lathe's good enough but unfortunately the VFD couldn't take it so I presume because it, the motor was struggling it's built up a fairly big current and it's killed this component here now I'm pretty sure that's probably all that is burnt out on this and if I knew exactly what that was, but because it's so burnt out, I can't actually read it. I'm sure if I was um, if I was able to identify this little bit here, 
desolder it and put a new one in this would be fine I have ordered a new VFD um, I haven't ordered exactly the same one because this one come from China and I didn't really want to wait that long for it but I am going to do something else in the meantime which I might film I might not but learn from my mistakes don't be impatient don't kick the arse out of it because you will kill your VFD but as far as the uh, As far as the um, tool and cutter grinder goes, that does seem to work. Needs a bit of pimping, I need to cover everything up, figure out how I'm going to do the electrics and make some more. I'll probably move this back a bit as well, try and get on this edge of the wheel. But I need to make like some sort of miniature spin dexer so I can do round stuff on it, which is really what I want it for. Right, well there you go, that's the end of this one. I'll see you next time, and whether it'll be working on this or working on um, putting me lathe right, I don't know. Bye for now.